This is the Whaley Select Board meeting of June 24th, 2020. Open the meeting. Uh, first item on the agenda is the meeting minutes of June 10th and June 15th of 2020. Motion to accept. Second. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Joyce. In favor of accepting. Jonathan? Yes. Fred, yes. Okay, vendor and payroll warrants, they've been online. Any questions? <clears throat> no. I'm good. Okay, next up, uh, public comment. Anybody from the public that's on? Have any, or anybody else have comments? Not, for items not listed on the agenda? No, okay. Moving on, our next item, the scheduled appointment was with the, we asked the Waitley Board of Water Commissioners to provide an update on the mandatory outdoor water conservation restriction and discuss the status of other projects like the manganese filtration system and the water merger. So maybe we can first hear about the, the uh, outdoor water restrictions and what's what's causing them and what's happening and what's the schedule for addressing them Wayne you want to talk about you want to talk about that rather than both of us chiming in seeing you put the restriction on it's up to you I can all right it was when was it last Thursday we were keeping up with our current pumping capacity. We were keeping up with what the town was using. And then Wednesday night, I don't know if everybody decided to water their lawns or what, but a normal use for like the past two weeks was somewhere around 200,000 gallons a day. And Wednesday, Wednesday to Wednesday night, the town used I think it was right around 380,000 gallons. Hmm. So it took our tank, it, it took the tank level down to just under half. So, I mean, the big thing was, is why the commissioners put the mandatory ban on was if it continued that way, it was really only about a day and a half of water left inside that tank for the town. So, Doing that, we ended up sub still supplying most of the town and also replenishing our tank. The southern end of Long Plain Road, River Road, including Straits Road, Gray Oak, Eastwood, <clears throat> Francis, and Egypt were all actually running off a Hatfields water system for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday which gave us enough time to replenish the tank. And I think it gave it enough time for a word to finally get out for everybody to kind of start shutting their sprinklers off. Cause we're actually, we're, the pumps are actually shutting off at night. Now we're actually gaining water during the day. So that this afternoon's meeting, the commissioner decided we're going to, they're going to change the restriction from, no outdoor water use to I would explain this easily. It'll be the odd number houses can use it on the odd number days. The even numbers can use it on the even number days, but no outdoor use during the times of, I thought it was, like I said, I thought it was, you guys decided 10 in the morning to five at night. 10 to four to four, 10 to four. So the hottest part of the day, nobody waters their lawns. If you're gonna water them, you can water them at night or in the morning when it's actually gonna do the most. And I don't know, it should if, you know I mean? If people start abusing that, then they'll just have to go back to no outdoor water use again. Until we're in the process of talking with an engineer from Berkshire Design to 
increase the pumping capacity by putting a booster pump station down system down here. What it all comes down to is these manganese filters, because of the restrictions of them now, we went from being able to pump somewhere around 180 to 190 gallons a minute down to only 140 now with the restrictions. So the booster pumps are gonna get put in to bring that number back up. We're actually gonna design them. We're permitted from the state to draw 250 gallons a minute. So we're gonna design these pumps to get to that threshold. And it sounded like this after, I mean, we're hoping to have them in by the end of July, but it's all gonna be getting through the paperwork and everything, I would say. Hey, Wayne, was yeah. it predictable? I mean, did, did we know that the manganese fil filtration system would limit our pumping capacity or is this a surprise to us? No, I brought it up to the engineer, Wynn George, a oh, we year were up and a half, there. two years ago. Yeah, quite a bit. And uh, he didn't think that there'd be any restriction that we'd be able to pump 200 gallons a minute through the filters. That's what they're rated for. And, and, and is that accurate or have, have, have we not been able to pump 200 gallons a minute? No, the most we've ever got through there, I think, is maybe 155 when they first installed. Yeah, when they were clean, clean and new. So was he uninformed or lying to us? I don't know, probably a little of both. That's a problem. Yeah. Well, that should have been, you would think that would have been addressed in the design of the, of the pumps or. Also, also the filter company never said there would be a restriction like that. But don't, th this is not the only town where they have the filters, I would assume, right? No, we are the first. You are? We are? Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, if, if, there's an Angie's li if there's an Angie's list for uh, manganese filtration, we should fill it out. Yeah, well, we're not the first for these type of fil- well, how do I explain it? We're not the first to use the green sand filters. We're the first to put these specific water soft green sand filters used commercially is I guess how I should put it. The system we have, we are the first commercial users of it. Okay. I, I, I think that, and this is, you know, I think just from a PR perspective, I think that we should do a little explanation on our end to make sure that people know that this is not something that we anticipated and we actually asked about this and we were misled. Because we don't want people thinking that the water department doesn't know what it's doing. And I'm worried that there's a little sentiment around town right now that that's the case. And we want to nip that in the bud. So I just wonder whether some kind of, kind of type of an explanation that we were misled by the company is appropriate at this point. The, fil the filters themselves work outstanding. They get, you know, all the manganese out. Like I have a, a filter in my cellar that's white when you put it in. That's been white now ever since we put the filters in. You right. know, I changed it right after. So all the manganese is coming out. They're doing their job, but they're restricting the water flow. Right. And, 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 and I guess they should have let us know that so that from an engineering perspective, maybe there was a workaround on that. I just want to make sure that you guys have your backsides protected a little bit. Yeah. And what, what if we didn't run through these filters and, and then you could pump the capacity you needed until you bought. I can actually. Pumps. Is that an option? Well, I did, I can't, without getting the okay from the DEP, I can't bypass the filters and put the manganese back through the water. Nor do we but, want to. I mean, uh, right, I, right, exactly. You don't want to. I mean, I'm sure if I call them and said, hey, we're, 
we're a day from running out of water if, unless I can bypass these filters to fill the tank back up. I'm sure they would let us. But yeah, if we bypass them, we can actually them well, the well pumps we have now, if we bypass the filters, we can actually get almost 300 gallons a minute, more than what you're actually permitted for. Okay, what level is the manganese now? Is it still out of compliance? Ours? Yes. It's, <clears throat> it's next to nothing. No, I They're, mean not running through the filter, but if you, if you took the filters out, say, what would the, the level oh be? Oh yeah, we'd be back over the limit again. We'd be like a 0.36, where we gotta be underneath a 0.3. But I think what he might be getting at is, what if we filled that tank 50-50 with the water that's direct and water that's filtered? Would that be then under the limit? And if it's not 50-50, is there a ratio that works to keep us under the limit, but um, in, you know, still in compliance, right? Yeah. Um, still be able I think to it's still it better if we can do as much as possible through the filters. But yeah. if, uh, if there's a, another kind of workaround that might still keep us in compliance the thing is if we don't take all the thing is if we don't take all the manganese out and say we only had a count of 0.2 when you did your wash and you put a lot of bleach in your wash your sheets would turn brown and yeah I, I i absolutely think it's better to have it out of there just for the <laughs> you know the appearance of that gray and i've been loving that i don't have that first spurt of gray water coming out at my house <laughs> um, but I was just, I was trying to reword what I think Fred was trying to say. Well, that is, you know, is there another solution by yeah, can we buy, yeah, bypass part of the water and filter part of the water? Yeah. Yeah, I could, yeah. I could ask the DEP if they would allow that. Yeah, but, um, but, I, I, but think I, I still don't like that solution as much as, Getting the proper pumps, uh, if right. the, what we really need is a booster pump. Let's get the booster pump and let's do it with all the water being completely filtered. I think that's a much better solution. Um, anything we do other than that would have to be a short-term, you know, band-aid. Yeah, short right. Because yeah. I have to believe that, well, we need to bring this to the attention of the, of the engineering company that, 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 that told us that there would not be a pumping restriction issue and see if they have a solution because it's on them. And if they have a solution, that's not going to be a cost to the town because what we have right now is not what we were promised to have. No. Yeah, we could do that though. I guess I didn't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. We're, we're trying not to use the same engineer on the booster pumps as the filters. It's just, it's Brian knows. I mean, I talk with him a lot. The engineer we're dealing with the filters is just, I mean, it's going on, what is it now, four or five years for these things now? Like and that. we're still not done. Yeah. But we tried, once the thing was, the, the system was designed in that, we actually wanted to switch engineers for the building phase of it, but the DEP kind of shied us away from doing that and stay with the same one. I mean, we're probably 99, 98% done with the whole project for the last seven months and it's been at a standstill again. That's why we're, you know, I mean, yeah, we'll bring it up to that engineer, but that's why we kind of went with a different engineer firm to get this done, hopefully hoping that they're quicker on their responses, I guess is the way I should put it. That's putting it nicely. Yeah, I, I just think that it, sh it should be on them to provide a, a, a solution that doesn't put our residents at risk. Yeah. That's my only point. Yeah, I agree with you. It's just, I mean, I could probably email them tomorrow and I might hear from them by the end of the month. They just don't answer our emails on time. And they seem up front, they seem very good. But the deeper we got into the project, the worse it seemed to get. Where are they based? Lee. Pardon? They're in Lee? Yeah. Yes. Oh, no, there's, 
There's been a few times me and George has gotten to pick up and drove down there. It, it, it's, it's pretty close to professional malpractice. Seriously. What, what about if we emailed them and copied um, Richard Neal, uh, Adam Hines, I don't think uh, Smitty Pignatelli? I think that, that when it, it be? I think when it comes down to what we have, there's only so much water that can go through those filters. You could sue them and everything, but I don't think you'd get anything out of them. I don't want to sue them. I want to find a solution. Well, well, you have a solution, don't you? Or, or you think you yeah. have one? Well, we know we have one. We just we need to put the booster pumps in to make up that difference of the pressure loss. Then our then our gallons per minute that we can put out the building go up. And do you think the water, the, 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 the water usage for, for lawns is the reason that we had an uptick? Are we sure of that? I, I would say so. Is, I mean, you drive around, there's just, you can, you, I mean, it's, you don't pass many houses that have sprinklers going on. Because I, there was one day, because when we were pulling from Hatfield, there was one of the days we kept <laughs> track of it. And besides that, the section of town that, was pulling off a hat field. I want to say it was like 88 to 90,000 gallons they used and the rest of the town only used another hundred. <laughs> but that was after the ban was put on. So there's still, you know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of water gets through the sprinklers on the grass. So Wayne, the person you were on with this afternoon talking about the pumps is, is that person responsive to your requests and our needs, or is this the one? That's oh yeah, she's Lucy Conley from Berkshire. Yeah, she's usually if I mean, because I forgot I forgot to ask her to come to the to join the water department meeting today, and I emailed her like 15 minutes before their meeting, and she just answered me right back and joined. Yeah, she's very very responsive and quick. Okay, the other, not a concern, but maybe a information point to tell people that this doesn't, has anything, has nothing to do with the capacity of the water system that we have, supply of the water system. We have enough supply, it's just the, the pumping capacity is the issue. So in the future, when we merge other parts of town to it, we still have sufficient capacity because that's yes, we that people could be asking well if you you have water restrictions now are we running short of water yeah no yeah like you said the the water's there our pumping capacity is just down right now because of the filters but that's something the other part of that is that's something we've been as the commissioners we've been talking about for probably six months or so that as quick as the town, I guess you would say, is growing and how much the water more and more is getting used, we have been throwing her in starting to look at where we can find another spot for a well to increase it, to how much we can pump even more. Because I mean, I mean, last month, for example, is a good example. We normally, for May, we pump somewhere between 1.5 to 2 million gallons and this May last month, we pumped, it was just shy of 5 million. Which, it's a dry year, but I mean, the town, like we said, the town's only getting bigger. So that is something we've been looking at is trying to figure out where, where to either put another well or like we threw around maybe for the summer, have a second storage tank to hold more of a reserve capacity. What percent of the of the supply are you pumping? Like fifty percent, seventy percent? What do you mean? Of the supply of the water, how much are you pumping? Right now? Yes, I, I know you said the gallons, but is that like half of what's available, or two thirds, or what? I mean, you don't know what's available down there, but like I said, I we can get our pumps up to two hundred and fifty gallons a minute, and right now. 
they're pumping at right around 140. So we at least got 50% more that we can increase it. We can, right now, say roughly easy math, we can pump about 220,000 gallons a day. And if we hit our 200, get the pumps in to get to the 250 a minute, we can boost that to 360,000 a day. Okay. So what's, what's happening with the, the water restrictions now? What are you proposing? I think you mentioned it, but when is it going to start? And it'll it'll start probably tomorrow because I got to get we got to post it. We'll post it on the website. Hopefully, if Lynn's in, maybe she'll do another robocall. I don't know. Is it? I mean, would you guys think it's worth putting it in the newspaper? Does anybody enough people read it anymore? I mean, I guess that's the tough thing. Like we were talking at our meeting, you were there, Fred. Was how. Yeah. How do we reach more of these people quick enough? <laughs> yeah, I, I got to tell you, <laughs> I, I think I'm starting to wonder whether the best way to reach people is Jim Sabini's Facebook page, because <laughs> that's what I hear. I mean, you know, it, it just seems like that's what gets people chirping. <laughs> well, so maybe... Maybe Jim would be nice enough if you'll put it on there for me then. <laughs> I don't, I, but anyways. <laughs> I don't, I think that that may help, but that's still not getting that many more. I, I think after a day, his he's face. He's issuing a couple of warnings when he sees somebody running a, 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 a breaking the rules. Uh, a couple of warnings and the word will get out. Yeah. Yeah, and I really, we do a lot of call. I really do. We can do the Facebook page, but I think uh, having the police issue a warning or two is probably uh, a reasonable thing to do. That was happening over the weekend. There was a couple of people that had their sprinklers on, <clears throat> and I told officers, if you're driving around and you see sprinklers on, just stop and mention to them that a couple of people that, that had them on didn't, didn't know or they weren't aware. Of course. Yeah, so. that's why warning is probably the appropriate thing. It works. Uh, but if you were to uh, visit and address a second time, that's different. Yeah, then that would be different. Yeah. And the other thing I, I guess I proposed earlier today, Wayne, was for you to coordinate your list of users with uh, with Lynn's robocall and the yeah. ones that aren't on the robocall to to reach out with them either. Visit or or send a letter saying you have water ban restrictions or put something in your mailbox or however you think you want to do it. Maybe there isn't that many that you're missing. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the town don't care. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. That probably gets it down to just a few hundred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a significant Which, postal cost, honestly. Right. Um, well, if you took half of them that are already on a robocall, it's even less. So. No, no, that's what I, I already accounted for that. Oh, you already did? Yeah, you know, there's 750 households in Waitley, approximately. Right. And then if half of those are on the robocall, and maybe another few are not, like, like I don't know, two, a third of the town is not on the water, uh, and then say half of those are on the robocall, there's 250. So that's what I mean. A couple hundred might be the number you end up with. I don't know for sure because I haven't looked at those lists, but I think that's a reasonable estimate. Okay. Well, can we, I guess I'd suggest that you coordinate that with, with, uh, with Brian and Lynn and see how you can reach out to more people or, or reach out to the people about it. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, especially like the last one. I mean, that's the biggest time we need to get a hold of everybody quickly when, you know, I mean, like I said, you, we were about a day and a half from having no water coming out of the faucets. Yeah. Just, just as a point of interest, the, the message that we put out on our Facebook about the water restriction um, currently reached – I know it's not everybody in town, but it's yeah. currently reached 2,500 people. So it's a pretty decent number of 
people reached. Considering that you, we got have 25 people in town, yeah. <laughs> but you got to keep either somehow renewing that or posting it every day because after a couple hours, it's down to page 18 on Facebook and nobody goes that far. <laughs> <I'm people. laughs> I don't know, Fred. My you wife seems every to... day, every morning at, at seven, whenever you get to work. Maybe that's a better way of doing it on Facebook. We post it every day. Well, but but the the concept around it, it's not that everyone sees Jim's post, Fred. It's because other people are 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 re, re, reposting. It's right. not that they they look at Jim's original content. It's that then fifty million people are reposting what Jim said. So. Just be, when Jim posts it, isn't impacting necessarily the whole 2,500. It's when other people are reposting throughout the day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's you guys. I mean, it's the water. It's the water commissioner's choice as to how to do this. We're just. It's your ball game. We're just suggesting. Right. And and I and I think anybody that's. I mean, just anybody that's watching this uh, live or, or later on the tape version, if, if you're not on the robocall list with Lynn, I would uh, encourage you to, to sign up for the robocall, whether you have a landline or a cell phone. Uh, I think she'll accept either, either one, but you need to do that. And I think it's important not only for the water department uh, restrictions that we're going through now, but there's going to be changes in the water department in the next year or two that that uh, people may want to know about and know about sooner than reading it in a in a paper or a newsletter. So uh, yeah, we're not hearing about it at all. To sign yeah, up, uh, more people to sign up, and maybe we'll put an art put an article in on the scoop uh, next edition that comes out to encourage people to, more people to sign up for robocalls. Yeah. Um, and for those who are listening, if you just go to the Waitley website, uh, waitley.org, um, it's uh, right there. Um, I'm, actually, I just pulled it up. Um, and I'm trying to find where's the CTY Connect logo. I thought it was on our front page. Um, but now I can't find it. Um, how would people find it mm. and I had to search for it to find it okay and it looks like it's under um, the about menu so it's not under the home menu anymore um, but if you go to the front page and you hit the about um, and that page has the next CTY information oh, embedded somewhere in there. Maybe we could make that a little bit easier to find. Maybe put it um, on the, the landing page, the waitly.org page. There's some room over in the lower left-hand corner. So that might be a good thing to look into. Okay, so uh, you'll look into that. The other thing we wanted, I guess, since we got you on the line, Wayne, and and George is, uh, I guess, status reports of what what's happening with the water merger. Where do we stand? Uh, what's going on? What what's the schedule? Well, I did hear back from the engineer. I'm trying to think when. I think it was last week that he did admit he put it back on the back burner of things he was doing but he was going to pull it back out and get the paperwork into the DEP to get everything approved. Hopefully I will, I planned on tomorrow or the next day emailing him again to just to remind him so he wouldn't forget and put us on the back burner again. Other than that, I really don't know yet because we really can't, I mean, you really don't want to start digging everything up and building stuff until you get the approval from the DEP, and I don't think we really can either until Brian would know better. We do uh, easement or whatever we're going to do with Ann. We need to do that. One of the one of the important steps that needed to happen was the the amendment to the Aquifer Protection Overlay District. Yeah. 
town meeting last night because we received word from Mass DEP that if we didn't have zoning controls in place that that met the um, the they wouldn't let us do it for, for, water, like, for the water quality then they wouldn't let us expand the expand the system or combine the system so that needs to happen um, the engineer needs to apply um, to mass DEP for this modification and yeah in terms of in terms of the easement that should go fairly quickly is this the same engineer you're dealing with on the pumps? Same firm, yes, but different engineer. Mark's kind of, how would you put it? Retiring. Kind of retiring, I guess you'd call it. So he's checked out already. Yeah, pretty close. <laughs> you guys have bad luck with engineers. <laughs> <laughs> So, any when would you expect the merger to actually take place? You look, next year. I honestly, yeah, I can't. I don't know. I mean, depending, I'll give him a shout tomorrow and see where he is. If he did apply, and I mean, the other, the other factor is, is there's nobody from the DEP working in their office. Everybody's at home, so I don't know how long it would actually take them to review everything and approve it. But yeah, no, I mean, it'd be nice if we could still get started on it this year, but I don't, I don't probably don't see that happening. Can I make a suggestion that rather than, rather than trying to figure out how to expedite it in this meeting that a subcommittee or a subgroup of the people on this call of this meeting get together and strategize how we how if possible at all we can expedite this process there's got to be I mean the squeaky, the squeaky wheel truly does get the oil yeah and if, and 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 maybe maybe you know Brian and Wayne and you know Fred or I'm happy to get on a call to figure out a strategy around around getting noticed so that people pay attention to this thing and and I guess I do believe that we should be leaning on our elected officials at some level to, to, to push this. I think theoretically, you could, once you've got the easement, you could build a building, buy the p booster pump and everything, but you just couldn't turn it on until we get permission from the DEP. Right, and, but <clears throat> the problem with that is if they say no, then we built all that for nothing. They're not right. gonna say Well, they've anything. gotta be brought along, along <laughs> with the process. Right. Let's because it's Brian, Can you can you? I'm suggesting because again we could talk circles around this all night. Can you extend invitations to people you think should be, or could you know would would be strong candidates for being a part of this to 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 figure out how we expedite this? I don't know how, and maybe I'm crazy, but we're not going to solve it here. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is that is that the engineer needs to get on the ball and do it. The, the, the other stuff is the other stuff. I think can happen pretty quickly. That's but we need the approval from MassDEP before you know before we want to start construction. Can can someone email me the name of the firm? Yeah. But, yep. <laughs> do we do we still owe money to either? Are they, well, is this firm for either project? Do we still owe them money? Which, which project? Well, either either one, the filters or the merger. Filter and project. Yeah. We will owe for the merger. We will once he gets back on it again. And the filter, we just have the we just have the retainer, the retainer. Yeah. And a little bit of money that that for the for the SCADA system. I think, yeah. right? Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, literally all that's left for the filter part of it is the SCADA system, but I don't know why it's taking so long. Well, I'll, I'll volunteer to work with, with Wayne and Brian and whoever else you think you want to put on a subcommittee to, to address this, so. 
Okay, we'll leave it at that for now. Any other any other questions we have for the water department or water commissioners here? I don't have any. Jonathan, anything else? No. The water department or commissioner, you want to say anything more? No, I don't think so. Other than you know, we can talk to the DEP and that and see how long it would take to get approval and proceed like that. I, I think I think George, I think that's a good idea just to have it in our back pocket for knowledge. Yeah, okay. They, they they know about the center of town and how little water that they have. You know, they run that whole town on eight eight thousand gallons a day. Which is amazing. Yeah. I, I would reach out to the DEP to say, hey, you know, how how can how can we work with you to expedite our the part that we can control outside of the engineering piece that clearly is out of our control? And maybe they'll take videos. Okay, without any further comments, uh, I just appreciate you, Water Department, Wayne and George, for being on our Zoom meeting today. Uh, yeah, thank, a lot. You. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I hope people yeah, listening uh, appreciate more what you're doing and trying to do and how we're trying to solve our water problems and continue to maintain water for the residents. So uh, if anything significant happens or you want to be on the agenda again, uh, please let us know. We can put you on anytime if there's a message you want to share with, with everybody. Uh, we can do that in the future as well. Well, as soon as we hear something from the DEP, we could let you know. Okay. okay. Okay, moving on with our agenda here. The next item is the COVID-19 state of emergency. We've got uh, two, two uh, directives here and another, another new item. Brian, did you want to talk about these? Yeah, I don't know. I just pressed the camera off. <laughs> puts across the um set of my name on there. the directive and the and um the order i don't i don't think those need to change at all i agree um, I and mean, what's the point we haven't gotten any more direction from the governor's office so status quo yeah yeah and things seem to be working reasonably smoothly people are getting the business done that they need albeit maybe they have to make a phone call first or whatever um, and um, uh, I think that's, I've not heard anybody feeling like they were really put out by only having Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings available, given how flexible our staff has been about making appointments when people can't go outside in those particular times. Okay, moving on. Uh, another item was to discuss whether to issue tag sale permits for the remainder of this calendar year. So I had I had sent that question to Fran, Fran Fertino on the Board of Health about whether they thought it would be okay to issue tax sale permits again, and I and I included I think I included Fran's email in here. Yeah, uh, I see Fran's email and a uh, uh, guidelines from Greenfield. Guideline, yeah. Um, it, something like that seems reasonable if we can put together some guidelines like that if we wanted to go out to have them. We have had a couple requests um, and we've told them that it, it's not possible right now. Um, so I guess it's really up to the, the board as the the holders of the tag sale permit authority. I guess I'm wondering why we would hold people who want to have a tag sale to a different standard than someone who just wants to have people over to their house for a, for a cookout or, a, or, or some other type of event. Um, the regulations are pretty clear that you're supposed to be social distancing, although you really can't control much on private property. Um, there have been smatterings of get togethers in town that clearly are more than 10 people and we have no authority to stop that and I'm not sure we should but we don't stop that so what's the difference between a tag sale and someone having a cookout for 50 of their best friends 
I think the difference is that we, we require a permit for your tag sale and we collect $10 or $15, whatever the, the fee is. So it is in some way an event that is approved by the town. So that's the main difference in my opinion. And Brian can chime in and correct me if there's something I've missed. But I think when you come to the town to get a permit, that's sort of giving you permission, permit and permission coming from the same root, Latin, Greek, whatever root. Um, that's, I think, the main difference, that we don't interfere in people's private lives when we don't have to give them a permit for what they're doing. But if we're giving out a permit, then I think we can say, you get this permit, but we expect these two pages worth of things that the health, um, uh, the, sorry, the, uh, the, yeah, the health committee has, has put together. And um, that means if a police officer happens to come by, they could give you a warning or a citation if you're not following. Okay, I, I'm I think that's that the main difference. On, yeah, I just don't want to restrict the tag sale to not happen. I just, if we put guidelines around it, that's great. But I just don't, I don't, I'm not comfortable yeah. saying, no, you can't. I, I'm completely comfortable saying, you can have a tag sale, but here's your constraints. Okay. Um, okay. I, I, I do think they have to go hand in hand. Right. Why, why do we ask for people for, why do we give a tax sale permits? What's the reason for that? Give permit to begin with, not, not with the virus thing, but why, why are we doing that? We always have. Why? Do other towns do that? Yeah, revenue generation. <laughs> what, $10 by what? How many we get a year, 10? I, I think it's to some extent to um, have a little bit of control over somebody turning their front yard into a uh, tag sale every single weekend, you know, because if, if there were no permits needed, you can have a tag sale every single weekend. You could have a flea market basically in your front, in your driveway every weekend. Um, and that kind of thing is something that I think it'd be desirable to avoid. I think most neighbors would not want to live next to or across the street from, or even a house or two down from somebody who is basically using their front yard as a place to sell anybody's junk any particular weekend. Well, and that's just my, my understanding of it. I'm not trying to judge anybody, but there are, it's a different permit if you're gonna have more than one tag sale in the season, yeah. right? And it's a different permit if you're gonna operate really a flea market where it's uh, regular, regularly scheduled, you know, selling used items. Okay, well, we do, have one place. <laughs> we do have one place that does it continuously, I guess. But with a yeah, permit. Yeah, with a permit, right? Yeah. So you don't give that permit, you don't give that permission to blanket everybody in the town. You do it on a case by case basis. Right. I'm, and, I'm, you know, I'm, you, I'm with Joyce on this. I, you know, we don't want to turn anyone's yard into a, the weekly bazaar. You know, you know, it's 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 not the way it's set up here. Um, so I I'm fine with it. I, but I I would like to give people the opportunity to have their tag sales, yeah. as yeah. long as they follow yeah, I, certain guidelines. I don't, I don't have a problem. I guess we want to continue issuing tag sales, but I'm not sure we need to give any restrictions more than what's already out for for the for the virus situation we have today. I mean, yeah, I think that's all the Board of Health has said. Put they, I, I'm reading from what uh, Brian sent us. Hosting a tag sale, be safe during the pandemic. We're asking them if you're going to do a tag sale during the pandemic, post guidelines that are be visible to people who are approaching a rousing. Uh, that you should yourself wear a face covering at all times. You should disinfect items and surfaces throughout the sale. Offer hand sanitizer for the customers. Encourage physical distancing by locating chairs and tables at six feet apart. Indicate a one-way traffic with heavy-duty tape or signs. Ask shoppers to form a line, staying six feet apart. Consider ways to minimize contact at checkout. For example, round your prices to avoid having to make a lot of change. Accept local checks and provide space for customers to wrap and bag their own purchases. That is the extent of what we're asking tag sale people to do. And I think it's all consistent with state guidelines. No, wait, wait a minute. That's, that's what we got from Greenfield as an example. And I think that goes way, way overboard. Um, Which part is overboard? Requiring people, requiring people to accept checks. Somebody wants to buy something from you. You got to accept a check. I think that's, that's getting overboard. 
that that should not be even even an issue. If people want to accept cash or, or whatever, that's up to them. And disinfecting every item on there. It doesn't say disinfect what, every what, item. What's going to happen? How that's going to happen? I think that's that's part of what Greenfield is doing. Greenfield wants to do that fine. There was also a second page to that that mm -hmm. listed more reasonable stuff on there that is is basically the stuff that is come out for the virus. <coughs> the, uh, the social distancing, the wearing masks, uh, don't touch stuff that you're not buying. Like keep that kind of, keep in mind that kind of stuff that people already know. Maybe you want to remind them of that, fine. But that first one, I think, is going way overboard. I, I guess I don't agree. I don't really want the town to get sued over somebody. You can't who, make people accept checks for stuff they're selling. Under. No, that actually doesn't isn't a requirement. It says consider ways to minimize contact. Uh, that and shouldn't checkout. even be. And that's given as one of the examples. It's not given oh, as a requirement. I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. Oh. You can't disagree with the words, consider ways to minimize contact at checkout. Those are the words that are there. You can't disagree well, that those are the words there and that that does not constitute a requirement. That constitutes a recommendation. Okay? You can't disagree with that. It's just there in black and white, Fred. Okay, but there's a second, part, there's a second version of that. Oh, I understand there's reasonable. a second version that doesn't mention anything about checks, but I think we would be remiss if we didn't at least recommend to people to do these other things that are over and above to protect themselves. Because well, anybody a, can come a, through, somebody who's been at protests, you know, two and a half percent of the people who went to protests are testing positive. Somebody could come through, maybe their son or daughter went to a, a, a protest. They don't even know they're carrying it. I think we should give people the maximum advice, all right, yes. and, and say that they sh should do these things, and they've got to abide by the state laws. You know, the, the, the first page, I think everything that is written down there is, is consistent. Well, I did second, the, second, the second version of that, I think, is, is more reasonable, and people are more likely to follow that. The first one, we're getting to too specific on things that we have no control over and 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 i don't think it should apply to people that, that are having a tag sale it's i think no it's different it's no different than having a party at your house and and there's it no is guidance different. other than what cdc has put out for that and i completely the second disagree version it's is different than having a party at your house right because we don't give permits to people to have a party at your house Okay. There's also not a transfer of cash. There's not a train. Yeah, and you don't have to pay to go Unless to a party. Unless it's one heck of a party. So I, I think we should give the host the maximum advice. And it's I think it's really clear that what they have to enforce is one thing. And what we're advising they really ought to do based on our, our health department, you know, the people who are actually looking at numbers across the state, looking at numbers locally. I think we would be derelict in our duty if we didn't actually give them that more stringent advice and say you have to comply with the, the state laws. I, I just, I can't agree with you on that, that we shouldn't tell them to, that they, we think we should, that they should do. I'm not saying we should tell them that, I'm saying that, that they should know what the, what the state laws are and what CDC and other oh, yeah. agencies no. about it. But we oh, should no. tell them what our health department says they should do. And you say they should just know this other stuff. Well, I think we should tell them, right? This okay. is what the law says you have to do. I, Fred, I, there, there's, there's no question, Fred, that, that, that leaving it up to people's own awareness of the current state or federal laws or the recommendations of the CDC there are so many interpretations out there. I, I, I do think that we are wise to say, here are the current recommendations to make, to, to preserve the public health and to maintain, uh, <clears throat> to, to maintain our ability to, to limit sickness. I, I, I think that that is incumbent upon us to, to remind people what is currently being recommended. 
Um, because if we don't, we are limiting our ability to act if people are taking steps that we really feel are, are, are impacting the public health. So awareness building is always a good thing. If people want to turn their back on, on the awareness, that's, that's different. But awareness building, there's never anything wrong with, with encouraging and recommending and making sure that people really understand the consequences of acting foolish. And it's why we suggest a mask. It's why we're saying within six feet, you really should be wearing a mask. So when someone does hand someone a, a check or cash or whatever it is, that they are literally a foot from each other, that they should be wearing a mask. And, 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 that, and recommending that and reminding people that that's to protect their own health and to make sure you're not getting somebody else sick. I, I think that's being a good citizen. I have no problem with what you're saying, Jonathan, but there's some parts of, of, of that example that came from Greenfield that I think are, are overbearing on the, the tag sale owner. Such what? Such as? Pardon? Such as? Well, Brian, can you show it up so we can, can you put it up so we can see it? Otherwise, we're, we need to talk at another time if you can't do it, I guess. Uh, I can do it. I've got his, um, um, I've got his, the, the said, stuff Jonathan, Brian sent us. We can remind him to do that, but like I'm saying, there's things in there that are, to me, don't make sense and are too restrictive. So I'd like, I'd like to suggest that that second document is written in such a way that it's a sign that's to be posted. Yeah. It says, welcome to our tax sale. Yeah. So I think that's a sign that's intended for, for customers that are arriving. I think the, the one prior to that is, is guidelines for the host of the tax sale. And I just want to say, I think the difference between, from a public health standpoint, the, the difference between hosting a party and, in a tag sale where, where you're going to be coming to contact with people that you don't know who they are, it makes it more difficult for contact tracing if, let's say, the, the host of the tag sale tested positive for COVID the next day. Um, there's going to be no way that they can contact everybody who went through that tag sale. As opposed right. to a party, you, you likely know who was there and can contact tracing is a little bit easier. Yeah, I'm looking at this, Fred. I don't see anything overly restrictive here. Well, disinfecting items. I, That's I mean, pretty standard, Fred. That's pretty standard. I'm on free cycle. Every single person is required to disinfect any items that they're giving to other people before they put them out for the other person to do a touchless pickup. That's really standard. But that's individual. Aren't people on there selling individual items? Free cycle is giving away individual items. This yeah. should actually be selling. And I think we should recommend that people do disinfect them. It's easy to do. Alcohol wipes, swish, swish, it's disinfected. Oh. I mean, it's sort of like if, if when we're when we're allowing practices at Hurley Heath Field, people have to sanitize their hands before they show up for practice and after they leave practice. They can't share bats. They can't share helmets. They can't do certain things if they want to use our property. That's not to be restrictive. That's just to be smart so that we don't we're not a a a, a, a public health hazard. So <clears throat> recommending that people are are putting tables six feet apart or are disinfecting items. I, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I go to the grocery store and I am about to grab a cart, I ask the attendant, has this been sanitized? And if, it, and if they can't answer that in a, in, a, in a direct way, I ask them to do it for me. Okay. Yeah, it's just, and, and to disinfect it, it really is just a matter wipe it down with an alcohol wipe and so, so this what uh, we're looking at now is what would go to the the tag sale owner i guess right that would be to the tag sale host oh. um and now i'll scroll up to um 
the thing that Brian mentioned would be a possible uh, sign for people to post. Um, I think on the previous page it said post uh, guidelines uh, so that people coming in will be able to see it and people browsing will be able to see it. This would be that sign that the face covering is required, that they should have arrows. I don't know if you've been down to, I think one really good example down at the Galonkas farm stand, there's arrows, it's really clearly labeled. They've got tape out so that you stay six feet from the person in the next section. You know, you've got a certain section of vegetables you can look at during the time and then when you're done with that and the next person's moved on, you move in and then you can select from that set of vegetables and so on. So, it's, I mean, it's just an attack. So you separate your tables by six feet and let one person browse a table at a time and then move to the next and move to the next. If you want to go back, hey, you just go around the line right. and you have to go back in at the beginning. Okay. Um, it's, it's not onerous in any sense at all. I think it's actually customer service friendly. I think okay, I think it's going to encourage Joyce Palmer Fortune to go back to Golunka more often because yeah. they're encouraging those kinds of actions. Right, and then you've got somebody there wiping down the the little baskets uh, with an alcohol wipe, and then putting the baskets out for the next customer. And when you bring your basket back, it goes in the pile that she hasn't disinfected yet, wipes it down, and gives it to the next person. It's not hard to disinfect items. Okay, let, let's get back to what we're, to, we're, we're deciding on here. We can talk all day about how to disinfect and social distance. Uh, the, the, the person applying for the, for the tag sale permit, uh, Brian, help me on this. They have to fill out an application, right? Don't, or do they? Do they have to fill out some form or application? How do you do that? He's a politician. Pardon? I don't know where that came from. <laughs> hey, I, I can't tell where the noise came from either. Um, yeah, they, 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 they apply for a, a tax sale permit. Okay, they apply for, for a permit. Uh, and would this be, a, if we should adopt the, providing these two pages here, would that be part of, the, of their permit? It's something that it's something that we would probably it would something we would probably post on the website to say tag sale yeah it's, it's something that they would get tag sale permits if we're gonna issue tag sale permits here the here's the guidance for holding a tag sale during the uh, during the pandemic during the next five months four months and obviously if if things go bad again then we'll have to reconsider whether we it's a it's a a good thing to do or not to. But I, I mean, I don't read the, at least the, the bottom, the the fourth bullet there. I, I don't read those as requirements. This is considered ways to minimize contact to check out. It says, for example, I think those are suggestions as to what people might do. Um, encourage physical distancing. I think I mean, to me, those seem a little bit more directive. Um, the other one about above it under promote hygiene, wear face covering at all times, that's pretty specific. Disinfect items and surfaces before throughout the sale. That's pretty vague in, in terms of it says before, you know, you have to do it before and it says throughout the sale, but it obviously doesn't say how many times you have to do it, Yeah. which is, I think, okay. It's, it's, we're not gonna, I don't think we should make it that prescriptive that you have to wipe down everything every five minutes. Um, but it provides some general guidance as to what would keep people safe. And I think it's a good idea to offer hand sanitizer. Um, the, the, the first bullet on this page, is that referring to the, the, the second page for guideline guidance? I think so. I don't know for sure, but that would, that I would infer that's what that's. Yeah. It seems reasonable to me. Again, I, I think you're crazy not to because when I'm at a store and there's no hand sanitizer, I'm like, hmm, I really wish there was hand sanitizer here. Yeah, but then maybe the first bullet should be post guidelines such as suggested on the next page or something here. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we can, we'll make it all make sense.
Okay, can we move on? We need to decide first if we're uh, going to continue issuing, well, if we're going to issue tag sale permits for the remain, remainder of the calendar year. Do we need a motion? I would make a motion that we allow tag sales uh, with, in conjunction with these recommendations and that follow the guidance from, from the state. Um, and I would second that. I would um, add that it is expected that you will post the guidelines and promote hygiene and do so at least some subset of those things. But I would think post the guidelines really is a must. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. That the first one, it, 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 there's no wiggle room there. The others, the way they're written, there's some wiggle room. But I think and then providing them with the sign, I think, is appropriate. Um, I think that's, um, I just want to make sure that that's the way it's interpreted when people are given these um, these kind of handouts when they get their permit. Yeah, I agree with that. Because we don't want, because they become, they technically become a business when they have a tag sale. Temporarily, yeah. they're a business. Did these come from, from the state, Brian? Is, is this what came from the state, or is this from Greenfield? That's from Fran, and he said that's from Greenfield. That's what Fran gave us as a recommendation. Yeah. So our health department is re is recommending this. Right. Our board and of we health. typically adhere to the, our the guidance of our appointed and and you know and, and department heads and volunteer heads. Okay. So if uh, I guess we don't know if these came from the state or not, or what the state has issued, do we? I don't think the state has issued any tags, any guidance on tag sales that I know of. They have no guide. Okay. Yeah. I think they would be very similar if they came out. Okay. So I've made a motion and Joyce has seconded. Okay. We're ready to, to vote. Roll call vote. Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred? Okay, I guess. <laughs> okay, I guess. I agree with most of, most of it. We'll just well, it's a matter of what people do, I, I guess, how they comply. And who who does who does checking on on tag sales? I'm just curious. Does our police do that? Nobody. Huh? I mean, the board of health could because they can check on anything. Pardon. Right. The Board of Health Board of could, Health. Okay. But they can do that really for anything that's under their purview. Right. Okay. Typically typically on a normal year on a typical year there's if there's an issue with, with traffic or, or something and the police would, would be involved. But other than that we don't have any general guidance to follow or to enforce for tax sales. Okay, moving on, our next item uh, under the yeah. agenda is old business to provide an update on the Whiteley's Community Choice Power Supply Program. So the mailings have gone out from Colonial Power and people should have received them or should be receiving them. Um, looks like that, like Joyce is telling. Yeah. Um, I haven't received mine yet. This just came Bye. yesterday. So yours came yesterday. I, got my, I guess day. Westbrook Road is a priority here. <laughs> I don't know. Do you want basic service? Or have you selected you your know. supplier? That's the question. So people who are on Eversource Basic who pay the the basic service rate will get mailings, right? If you've chosen a third party already, you will not get mailings. But you can opt in by going to the website and clicking on the news article and yeah, Looking which is why it's important that we have the other ways of reaching out other than the mailing. Fred, did you get yours? Yes, I got it. I got it Monday, and I think that the thirty-day response was from Monday. I remember, like, was it July twenty-second? Was the response date? Mm -hmm. Is that the same? Is that going to be the same for everybody? Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I'll have to 
go find that pony from the express. Uh, Amy, did you get yours? Amy on, did she get one? I did not, no. Not yet. The town got like eight of them. Oh, yeah. There you go. For all of our different accounts, so. Yeah. All right, well, the robocall went out about about everything, so. Yep. We're right. in good shape. So there's so the energy energy committee will have the uh, the open forum question and answer session on June thirtieth via Zoom. The we Zoom from today. We from today. That um, there's information on the website about how to access that. You can go to the the energy committee agenda or the news article item on the website and find that there. So bring your questions there. They have all the answers I hear. Well, will, will, the inter, will the energy committee know at the end of 30 days what people picked? Not, not well, we're, the not, we're not privy to that information. Pardon? We're not privy to that information. That's, that's personal information. I mean, not, not individuals, but say the percentages of who picked which one or anything? No. Uh, we, we, we can, that's a, that's a request that we'll have to put out to Colonial Power, but I, I, that's 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 private information, so I, we can ask, but I don't know that they're going to give it to us. Oh, I don't know. We'll ask though. I, I mean, I'd be curious to, to know those statistics as well, Fred. So yeah, right. Just just to no point of view, you have not not individuals. I know because that could, because then because then we could do some 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 just statistical data crunching to to see what kind of. Uh, you know what kind of CO two reduction we're realizing as a town, all those kinds of things. But that's that's going to be something that Colonial Power would have to provide. We we don't we certainly don't have that information. All right. Okay. Moving on. Uh, under old business, discuss the need for additional storage space at the highway garage. Brian, have we heard any more from? Yeah, I. I was actually hoping that Keith would be at the meeting, but um, I had emailed him a reminder today, but he didn't get back to me. So. So they'll be on for next week, next next meeting or? I mean, the hope was is that he could use, we could use some of the excess town building monies from his, from the current fiscal year to, to make the purchase, but that would need to happen before June 30th, before the board's next mm -hmm. meeting. So, um, I have I said like two questions. So the first part of the question is, can you remind me why it is the things they need to store couldn't be just stored in the empty space at Sandy Lane? And the second one is, um, if you're going to remind me why and probably going to be valid reasons. Um, uh, if um, whatever this purchase would be, is it something that we would use for anything else after the highway garage no longer needs it for storage? I think the, I think the second answer is easier because I think the fire department is looking for space as well. So I think, oh. I think it would not go unused. It would not go unused. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly don't know what's stored up there. I don't know how frequent they need to access it. Um, my thought was that it was more seasonal stuff, but I don't know for sure. Um, and roughly, what was the, the dollar cost of this purchase? Uh, he had told me, the estimate he gave me was around four, I think it was $4,000. And do we know any more about the the size of this? Just what he had suggested before. I think it was it was a, like a standard chipping container, which is like thirty to forty feet. And can you remind me where that was supposed to get put? Like where would its semi permanent location be? I think it would be put behind the highway garage because I don't think they look very attractive. Right, I was gonna say so it's gonna be out of sight for the most part. 
Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think it's 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 a tough thing because I don't know that I have all the answers. So, mm. well, let's wait for Keith to be here in a couple of weeks, and we can flesh this out a bit, bit more than that's what I would suggest. Yeah, but then it comes out of next year's budget, which may or may not have an excess of four thousand dollars. Well, that's fair. Yeah. So we could, I mean, we, could, we could always say yes. And then in two weeks, decide, you know what? We're not going to do this after all. We got one week till the fiscal year's over. So, well, you have six days. So, there's a possibility we could do a uh, 15 minute Zoom because everybody loves Zoom, right? Yeah. Well, we can also send Keith a quick, uh, uh, a quick email. Maybe he'll get back to us before the end of our meeting. But, what, what, so what is our, what is our, Concern or question we that we need to Keith to answer. I just was wondering what it is that they're storing that they couldn't store at Four Sandy Lane. Well, is, is let me ask Brian: is, is there room at Sandy Lane for this, or for whatever he's planning? Is is there room in that garage? We don't have the garage. No, but is is there. The, like there's that, that space we go into behind, uh, like we go through to the coffee machine, uh, and then there's a space over to the left. And if you go to the right, it's the coffee machine. If you go to the left, there's that other room where the uh, public access uh, equipment rack is for broadcast, you know, whenever we're going to get live broadcasts. We've got the public access equipment there, and there are just shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves there that are empty from when that was a library storage space. And that's isn't not being rented to New Pro, that part. Isn't it my, isn't it fair to say that, that Keith was looking for it to be easily accessible because it's stuff that's used on regular ba on a somewhat regular basis and, and trick, trekking back and forth to uh, Sandy Lane um, for both his needs and also as Brian points out, the fire department uh, is counterproductive to, to, to town operations. Hence my question, because right. if it's really stuff that's just used seasonally, then that's not an issue. Well, Brian, what do you think we should do? Do we, should we have a quick meeting once we get answers from Keith or? That's what I would suggest. Um, I, I think that's probably the, the best way to go about it. I, I just, I don't feel confident giving the go-ahead at this point or recommending that you give the go-ahead at this point without answers to your questions. Okay. It's not a, it's not a, like, I guess I like double negatives today. It's not an insignificant amount of money, so. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So why don't you find out when it's available to discuss it with us and try to schedule a meeting? We got well till next what Tuesday, I, I guess. I, I don't know what his schedule is to purchase it, but right. uh, it should be Monday then, or or even tomorrow or Friday. Well, Forty-eight no, hours for 48 hours. So Monday. Forty-eight hours. Yeah, we'll schedule a meeting for Monday, and then if we need it, we need it. If we don't, we don't. Okay, Monday. What's a good time? My calendar. Afternoons. Uh, next Monday's all open for me. Does it say one at one o'clock? No, I then then I may not be able to do it. I I just never know. I would say five o'clock. Five o'clock, okay. Monday the twenty ninth at five o'clock if we need to. Okay. Okay. And our question really is what, what is he going to store in there? Right. That What is he storing there that could not be stored at Four Sandy Lane? Because we, I mean, one of the reasons that people said we should buy that place is because look, now we've got all this extra space. And if we need space for things later on, we have this space. And um, I guess I would like a, a, a better explanation of 
what needs to go there? Or can they make it so that things that they don't need very often can get sort of for Sandy Lane and maybe then they'll have room for the stuff that's in the mezzanine to come into uh, more better approved spaces. I don't know. But I can't believe I'm the one who's the hard, you know, the hard, I guess this is cable, the hard ass on this one. Say, Mary, don't quote that bad word in the newspaper, please. Well, okay, so what is he going to store in there? And, and also maybe the, the location, where is it going to actually be on the property? So, okay, moving on. Uh, next item under old business is uh, discuss and vote to enter into a lease with New Pro for, for rental of spaces at the town offices. So if, if we don't do this lease, we'll have tons of space. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but, but why would we not do this this lease? Yeah, what is it pay us right now? I no, I I I think it's a good source of revenue for the town, especially in a time where revenues might be a little tight. Right. What what, what what's the rent rent again? Um the last lease uh the current lease is eighteen hundred. Okay. And what are we asking in the future? That's that's the question. I sent out an email just before um we've never we've never increased the rent in so this is this will be the third lease this will be the third 18 month lease that we've done with them and it mm -hmm. we've been at 1800 for, for the prior leases um i did a, a quick calculation looking at the cumulative rate of inflation was 4.6 percent from 2017 to 2020 um, and I also tried to look at utilities. Um, their use has become a little bit more intense. You have the email from, from Jeff. He's the managing partner at Newpro. Um, I don't necessarily have an issue with that. It did happen kind of organically and it happened slowly. Um, but even so they, we keep the heat that we don't, we don't, we control the heat back there. We, they've never asked us to turn it up above, um, in the winter and anything above, I think we keep it at 55 during the winter. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think the air handle was on at all for the, for the, for cooling in this, in the summer. Um, they don't use a lot of on utilities. I try to do a comparison of, of, of different times during those leases early on when they were just using it for storage and later on when they were using a little bit more but it was difficult to get a, an increase because, you know, we put in the vault during, during that period, the lens vault back there, that's, you know, kept at um, whatever it is, 60 degrees all the time with zero humidity. I don't know if it's zero, but it's low humidity. Um, not factoring to the weather, I, it's, but I don't know. So, so my suggestion was, was, um, Raising it by one hundred fifty dollars, um, so it wants to go up two hundred dollars, and then negotiate back down. So, uh, um, yeah, it's a dog that, yeah, the, the cat might be out of the bag. But if we go on with two thousand, we can. We yeah, can, I was uh, going to say two thousand dollars because, just because. Yeah, and then then we don't have to feel bad about next time saying, well, we're not going to raise the rent because. Yeah. Right. So we. We want to suggest two thousand. Yeah. Is that what we're saying? I move that we suggest two thousand as a starting point and accept anything down to as slow as nineteen fifty. Well, guess what he's going to count for with. Well, he will he see this recording? Is I, Mary going to put this in the paper? Mary, you know you like us. Okay. Anyway. Um, but don't don't say the bottom line. We're just. Uh, Negotiating okay. on two thousand. Then I move we start uh, have our starting uh, offer of two thousand. Second. Okay, well we need a roll call vote. Joyce. In favor. Jonathan. Yeah. Fred. Yes. Okay, moving on. Uh, new business to discuss vote on the uh, fuel contracts for diesel and heating oil for next fiscal year. 
I would move we go with our, our low bid, which is uh, Karis. They've been serving us well over many, many years. Second. So. Do, we, do we use heating oil, Brian? Um, not a lot. The library still has a, the library would still use it. Oh, the library still does. Okay, but nowhere else. Okay. And if we're recommending that we do the rack rate plus markup. And one of the as we have flexibility, we can use we can purchase what we need. Okay. Those in favor, roll call vote. Joyce. In favor. Jonathan. Yeah. Brad, yes. Okay. Uh, on a new business, discuss and make select board appointments for fiscal year twenty one. Brian, have you put something together on this yet, or are we? Yeah, you should have received it. It was in the email. Yeah. If you'd like, I'll do a share screen so we can all be looking at the same thing. Sure. Okay, I didn't mm -hmm. see it. We must have sent it late. Yep. Okay. Well, well Joyce okay. has put that up. I so, did. I'm putting it up as a share screen now, um, and I can make it a little bit bigger. Um, So I, I was thinking, are they, um, everything that says term expires 2020 is something that needs to be redone, right? Is that all, right, Brian? Yeah, all of these would need to be reappointed. And, and I'll, does the I'll, yellow I'll, highlighting have any special meaning? Yeah. Or just bringing it to our attention? Bringing it to attention that it's a three-year term. All the other ones would be one-year terms. Okay. So um, I'll scroll a little bit further down now. I think people have had time to see that. So under public services. So none of these are new. It's a continuation from uh, FY20. Yeah, and some of these that say per contract, it's, are we approving those as a formality? Presumably if we have a contract, then we have limited ability to, to not uh, approve. Um, we've got our part-time police officers, our fire chief, uh, our emergency management director. I'm so glad she's still willing to serve. She doesn't. Um, yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, assistant, animal control, hazardous waste, um, municipal right to know. Okay. We'll scroll up a little bit. Inspection service. Uh, we have a representative on that. Are these names correct for Franklin County? I thought is it Hawkins, one of them retired. Sarone retired, Jim Sarone. Oh, Sarone is the one, okay. At okay. some point, I think we should do a cost-benefit analysis of staying with the cooperative inspection program and, and partnering with some other town to, to, to share. Um, because I, I wonder whether, I, I'm just curious what the cost change, what, what the cost comparison would be. Because I have a feeling that the cooperative inspection program can be pricey for, those, for, for, for a town in our situation, but I could be wrong. Yeah, my understanding is it depends a lot on how many permits you do a year. So that uh, that would probably have to be uh, something we average over several years and don't expect any given year to have one be consistently more uh, cost effective than the other. But right. that was, would have to be looked at in order to know, right? Yeah, I, I, think, it's, okay. I think it's based upon the previous year what you pay, and which makes sense. I get that. Yeah. But we should look at it. Yeah. All right. So I'll go uh, to the next uh, few. Um, I still have to chuckle every time I see that we have to appoint fence viewers and field drivers. Um, and there's a vacancy. So those of you out there watching this on FCAT, this is your chance to be a fence viewer and field driver um, because there is a vacancy on that. Um, 
My understanding is we've been very happy with the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans District. Um, there we go. Um, with Don Sluger being our rep. Um, I'll go a little further, hearing no comments. No, go back to the CBA. You don't list everybody that's there. No. Just All those expiring this year, I think. Only the appointments. The only, the only ones that need to be appointed. Oh. Okay. Okay. So... So this, I'll leave that with Recreation Commission. This is just a page split there. Okay, I think that's our limit of two Hutkoskis on any particular committee has been met there. So that was supposed to be a joke, just celebrating those. Um, Historic Commission, uh, Energy Committee, I guess they don't have terms. Or are they supposed to be term expires? Uh, they're there forever. Oh, okay. All right. A lifetime appointment. Okay. Okay. I can't believe I've been on the Cultural Council for three years now. And then our Council on Aging. There's also, it doesn't say term expires 2020, so Council on Aging are just... Uh, they're uh, there forever. Those, or, those four expire in 2020. Oh, okay. So that just happens to be missing from this document. Okay. Yep. The term expires should be down there. Um, Wait, why isn't, um, Katie, Catherine? Yeah. Who am I thinking of? Catherine McGrail, Nancy Maynard. Yes, Catherine McGrail. Uh, they're not up for re they're not up for reappointment this oh, year. Oh, they're not. Okay. Okay. Okay, what's the housing there? There's a fur cog. And solid waste district that's different from manager, but uh, we've got Larry there and then transit, CPC, uh, personnel, capital improvement, South County. Mm. And senior center and 250th. I think that's no, not quite the end. Right, yeah. I didn't see open space on here. Um, oh, can I say something? And eventually this will go, I'll go through this list with Lynn, um, the town clerk, who has a lot more information than um, I've, I've been working off of previous annual town reports and the open space committee and the energy committee weren't even listed. So it's really um, just trying to revise some of the information I've had. So I eventually will sit down with Lynn to put a much better list together. Okay. okay. I don't know that the open space committee terms would end yet. Nope. Probably not. Um, so, if they need to be, we can do it at a at a at a future meeting. But okay. Um, and you put in a note here: Is it time to officially disband the municipal building committee? Yes. So that's also appointments that happen and I don't well, not, not necessarily I wouldn't do that right now 
Okay. All right. Then we should also include these folks then. Okay. So, why is it some some of these committees they have expired terms and others people are on forever? Why why the what's the difference? Because some have um some have some have term limits and some don't. So a lot of the ones that we see being appointed every year are are, are entity our organizations or, or boards and committees that are created by state law. For instance, cultural council has terms, ag commission has terms, CPC has terms. The committees that are that are more ad hoc type committees in town that are created by you know by the select board don't necessarily uh, weren't necessarily created with terms. Okay, so like a, a subcommittee, a frontier school committee, there, there's no listing of any of them on here? Oh, we don't appoint them. Well, the but you have a budget committee. Isn't one of us a member of that? And do, you mean, do you mean the finance committee? No. No, a frontier school committee's budget subcommittee. And I'm a member of Frontier the Regional Capital Improvement Committee. But is that, uh, yeah, is that appointment up for reappointment this year? I think that was an open appointment, but I, I don't know that it was. Okay, but the budget one. That might also be an open appointment. Oh, okay. There's no ending date associated with it. So shouldn't that be listed on here? The budget, or, I'm, I'm confused. Which? What are we talking about? The budget, say the budget one. Isn't Joyce on the budget one? No, I am not on the frontier regional. I think Fred's referring to the, I think Fred's referring to uh, collective bargaining. Oh, I'm on the Union 38. Well, okay. um, yeah, I'm not on the frontier one. Um, I think we have um, a couple of our school committee members are on that one. Bob is uh, for sure and maybe somebody else. But I think our select board only sends a representative to the Union 38 bargaining committee. We don't have a separate selectman's representative on the Frontier bargaining committee. That's my understanding. I'm not saying that's logical. I'm not saying that's the way it ought to be. But the Frontier Regional School Committee is so much bigger that uh, and they have more people to draw from there because they have both people from the Waiting School Committee and the Frontier School Committee to draw from for that. So they can have represent more than one representative from each town. And I believe those bargaining groups are put together as contracts are set to expire. They're not perpetual committees. That's right. That's right. Oh. Yeah, I, it just feels like it sometimes. The appointment is for the, the, the term of the the term of the region. So can we make a motion on, on this or are we not ready for it? Well, does Amy say we're missing something on here that she's gonna update? Well, I I mean, I need to talk to Lynn to see what the Open Space Committee and the Energy Committee, if there's term lengths for those committees. Um, but I, I mean, I, that's just a matter of just sitting down with her and-, and um, I, I think we've reappointed the Energy Committee every year. Yeah, I, I think it, it, given we're in the middle of this electricity aggregation, I think it would be a little disruptive to not reappoint the Energy Committee and have their next meeting next Tuesday be their last meeting that's official because they're not reappointed. I'm all so, for that. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, but I, I think it sounds like Amy may have some updates for us next time or so the things that are missing from here. Um, wow. I, I would recommend that you approve everything listed here. Yeah, that's what I was going to think. Yeah, so I'll move that. I'll move that we approve uh, the list that uh, uh, Brian has given us and just let people know there's a vacancy. And even if they don't see a vacancy listed here, uh, there's lots of committees that would really like more people to be involved. So call up Lynn or Amy and see which committee you can get involved in, folks. Um, okay, I'll, I'll second my motion. 
Okay, ready for a vote? Joyce? In favor. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred, yes. Okay, moving on. Uh, our next to last item on the agenda is town administrator updates. Brian? So let's talk about um, Tim's email. That way he can. That way he can. Uh, he can go have his supper, whatever he's gonna do. Um, so I sent around the email to you guys about um, his idea about um, reallocating some of the training money that wasn't spent in FY20 um, to start a body cam program for the officers. Um, so uh, we wanted to get your thoughts on that. Uh, the money's appropriated. I think um, I think Jim would like to do that. I think he has a lot of good reasons why. Um, yeah, I, I think it meshes nicely with the original purpose was for training. I think this is close enough that I think it's not a, a you know a breach of trust or anything like that. I, I had several questions about additional information. Did you share them with? The chief? Yeah, the second time I sent the email. <laughs> okay, well, I'd like to hear his answers. <laughs> Do you want to go through each one specifically, each question sure. you had? I'll have to look up the, the email, but. Um... What, what? Okay. Unless you have a list there and you want to. That's ask funny, what I can remember, what, what's the total program? What are you looking for? You're only looking for what, three now? Is, is this something for everybody and how many? And what so, for, so for right now, the, what we're looking at is to start the program off three body cams. Um, so we need the cameras themselves. We need something to store the, something separate than what we have now, a, a standalone system to store all the video on. And, um, if, if we have enough left, I'd like to have a completely standalone system, as in a laptop computer that we can hook up the body cam docking station to so we can put all the videos onto it, and to have um, an external hard drive to back the information up on as well. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at now. So storage device, laptop, and three body cams. Is this just for your, your full-time or part-timers as well? How are you going to manage? It's going to be for everybody. Okay. So we'll have three devices, kind of like what we do with our tasers now. We have three tasers. So I have one, Don has one, um, and the part-time officers share one because we all work an equal number of hours per week. So um, each device would be used the same, same number of hours per week. So this would be still limited to the three here? You're right now, yes. Yeah, right now it would be three. I mean, if we decided that we needed a, another one, a backup one, if in case one broke down or something, um, that, that may be something for, for future reference. But for what we need right now to get started, it would just be it would just be three. I don't anticipate having to get 10 or 12 body cams so everybody can have their own individual camera. Um, we can we can certainly uh, certainly share them. And you're going to provide training, or is there training required for this? Yes. Yeah, training will be a, a huge component. That's why I wanted to take it from the training budget. Um, there'll be policy training. I've got sample policies. I'm working on creating a, a policy um, for moving forward, how the body cams are going to be used, how and when, how we're going to store the data, how we're going to handle public information requests, how we're going to handle evidence. Um, request from the court. I mean, all of those things are going to be a component into the uh, the policy and who can see what, who can um, have access for viewing, who can have access for um, making copies. You know, we'll have to put some rest restrictions and things like that. There is software that, that comes with, um, it's proprietary free software that comes with the cameras that allow us to um, catalog, document, um, we, we may have to look into editing software moving moving forward a little bit as far as public record requests where we'd have to um, <coughs> conceal somebody's identity or take out a portion of a 
audio portion of the, the video, something to that effect, but uh, training on how to use them, training on how, on the policy, those are going to be big issues um, and they're going to be ongoing issues. It's not just going to be a, a one hour class and here's the power button and off you go. Um, it'll, it'll be an ongoing thing and what they can, what they can use the camera for the hub, they'll be able to view it when they're writing the report, they'll be able to view the, the video footage so they can better write their report, especially if there's a use of force incident um, involved so they can make sure that they're documenting things correctly and not just going off memory. So I, I think it would be helpful in that sense as well. Sometimes you get you know, a crazy event and there's so many things going on, you can't remember all aspects of it. So video would, would definitely help. Um, okay. so that, training is a big part of it. What surrounding towns are using it? Um, currently, Franklin County, I, I think there's probably only a handful. I know Hatfield is using them. They absolutely love them. We've actually called Hatfield for mutual aid to use their body cameras, to have an officer there with their body camera on so we could interview somebody on the scene or gather evidence that we, we might need that we don't have the ability to get without you know bringing in a camera or something like that. So um, we've used Hatfield a number of times with their body cams. Um, in the North County, I think there's, there's more towns up there, Deerfield, Sunderland. Um, I know they're looking at it, but they currently don't have any rolled out. Um, I know we we tried for a grant a couple of years ago, I think it was, and um, we were we were denied the the funding for that. So this has been a kind of an ongoing thing for for me. One to protect our officers, two to protect the the public and liability issues. Um, there's there's a, a number of reasons why why I think they're they're beneficial to have, especially given the the current state of the um, the country. I think people are people are almost expecting to see the the body cam footage or you know, prosecutors, court systems, you know, just general public. They're expecting to see it, um, and if you don't have it, it's it's a very difficult explanation, especially if you have a use of force incident, and then you're trying to explain that whether people are going to believe you or not, unless they see the video. Um, it's it's getting harder and harder for people to just take a police officer's word for it. Um, so I think it's it's time. It's been coming. Eventually, we're gonna we're gonna see this. It's not gonna be an option. Um, so I think it's it's probably a good idea to to start it now. Now while we have some money that we don't have to to raise or you know add to the budget. Okay. And is there guidance out for what kind to buy? What to buy? Do you have guidance in that or how you decide? We, we do. Yeah. There's there's two main companies: um, WatchGuard and Axon. Axon is a company that makes our our tasers. WatchGuard is probably the the leading uh, company in the market um, that any any department around that I've seen them I know state police are getting some Springfield police there's a lot of departments that are that are getting them um, the WatchGuard seems to be the you know the the top choice for quality audio video just everything everything that it offers um, I think that seems to be the kind of the, the top choice. But there are there are other companies out there, um, but again, you know the, the research that I've done. And two years ago, when we tried to apply for the grant, that's what I was going to get then as well. Um, so, yeah, those are the those are the two two main ones. There's a lot of companies out there, but I, I have a study where I think there was maybe eight or ten different companies where they compared, um, you know, software, firmware, battery time you know, encryption, all the different features and things they had. I have a study on that and um, WatchGuard is is at the top of the list on that one as well, so. Okay, I think you answered all of my questions. The, only, the last comment I'd make is it, assuming if we approve this to get some feedback from you in three to six months of uh, how you use them or effective and, and a report, something like that. You'll, you'll get feedback before three to six months. <laughs> okay, Jonathan. It's going to be an ongoing please. thing. It, it's, it's something I'll, I'll stay in contact with, with Brian about it. I can certainly um, get on the agenda for a meeting, give you guys an update, shoot you out an email, give you a, an actual report if you want that. Um, you just kind of need to know what information you'd be, you'd be looking for um, because it's, it's kind of a wide range of things. We, we do so many different things are you looking to see if it's effective? Or are you looking to see if, you know, if it's reduced 
you know, any complaints or anything like that. I mean, those, those are the types of things that are going to take a little bit more time, but just feedback as to how the program's going. That's, that's going to be an ongoing thing. Okay, Jim. Sounds good. Anybody else have any comments? Jim, what was it, four years ago that I sat in your office saying, why don't we have these stupid things? Right. <laughs> it, it's, it's been far too long in coming uh, yeah. for, the, for the, all the purposes that we've talked about. It should have happened a long time ago, and it, has, and it didn't, and it's fine. But I'm eager for it to happen now and, and to implement it in a way that's going to, you know, preserve public safety and, 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 you know, the reputations of officers and the, the safety of our citizens. So I, I, I can't imagine why we wouldn't do it in any way, shape or form. My, my reluctance going back a few years, even before we, we talked about it, the reluctance was there wasn't a lot, there wasn't a lot of it out there. There wasn't many departments using it. So our court system didn't really know how to handle it. We didn't really know how to handle the public record request. How do we handle HIPAA when we go to medical calls? Policies weren't really a big thing. So a lot of that stuff has been worked out over the last few years. So now we have some good policies. We have some good recommendations from the court. Um, so, and they're, they're actually, I mean, they still send it to me, even though they know uh, we don't have it. Anytime we have a, we have a case, they, they're, they send us a, a request for information. And that, on that request, it says cruiser cam, body cam booking photos or booking videos. Those are the three things they're looking for from every department. They want it and they can't get it fast enough. You know me, I just like to be on the cutting edge as opposed to waiting for other people to act. So let, let's just do this. No need to wait. Right, okay. let's do this then. Are we ready to vote? Um, I, don't, I don't think you need to take a vote on this. Take a vote, no. Because okay. um, it, it is under time administrator updates. Um, okay. I wanted to give you guys an update. Um, as to what he was thinking. Sounds like you have the support of us. Yes, good. sounds good. Go it's it's going to be it's going to be challenging with our officers. We have some officers that have been on for twenty plus years, and anything new you bring in, no matter what it is, um, it's going to be an adjustment for them. So we're going to have to we're going to have some trying times of people forgetting to turn the camera on, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is this is this you and Don we're going to have problems with? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Don mostly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, moving on, Byron. Thank you. Yes. Um, Williamsburg Road Bridge project. Um, we had the pre-construction meeting, and um, everything's pretty much moving forward with that. Um, the contractor has to submit for final uh, Chapter 85 approval, and they're working on submittals for that for MassDEP. Um, Chestnut Plain Road, the sidewalk project, hoping to get that out to bid in early July. Um, so that will be moving forward as well. Um, Keith let me know that um, one of our highway employees, Operator Labor, has accepted a position with um, a different employer. So we're going to have to be, uh, we'll talk to Keith about um, how we want to fill that vacancy. Um, and the annual town meeting's done, so that's good. Um, hey, we have gotten, I have gotten a lot of really positive feedback about that, by the way, and I've been sending it on to people sometimes, but there's just, you know, enough of it that, um, I mean, people I haven't had emails from in months emailing and saying, hey, that was really great. Um, and they gave me all the credit, so I was careful to email them back and say, look, I, it was really a big team effort. And so I'm glad you're on the call, Jim. You guys helped out. The highway department was critical in getting the setup done. FCAT, you guys are the best. Um, uh, Brian and Amy, I know, put in a lot of effort to make things go smoothly. And Lynn and Janet, and I just taken this opportunity to let people know how much the town people have told me their appreciation of how smoothly that went and I, I de de deflect their kudos to all of you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, any other items, Brian? Um, I don't think so. Okay, we're going to decide on future meetings. Uh, we are on our what, uh, second and 
is it four, second and last Wednesday of the month? Yeah. So hey everyone, I'll let you guys do it. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, okay. Jim. So that would be July 8th and uh, July 29th. Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping to be on vacation that week, the week of the sixth. Um, okay. So I don't know. If, in the past, we've gone to one meeting a month during the summer months. So I don't know if we want to do that yeah. again or. Could we tentatively say let's do the fifteenth? Fifteenth. And then I we can't be around, but that's fine. We could see if we need another meeting in that month or not. We might know better by the 15th if we need another meeting. I know um, a one group that's anxious to meet with us is the center school folks who we had to put off, that um, they are some folks who we want to talk to. And um, the other thing, um, in July, we need to uh, update the document about community policing. So. Um, if we only have one meeting in July, then I would hope that both of those things might be able to be on that. I know I'm not chair, so I don't get to set the agenda, but I'm just putting those out there. As, you can make um, recommendations then, Joyce. Yeah, so that's, I'm putting them out as a recommendation. Um, so Jonathan, the things we should try to do, because it's sort of, it's not as busy a time, and maybe um, that gives us a little time to be more thoughtful about those things. So Jonathan, is there another day on the week of the 15th? You're available? No, I, I, I may be away that week. I just don't know. But if oh. it's a Zoom meeting, I could maybe, maybe mm. join for a little while. I very much would like to be part of the center school discussion. That's the one thing that I... Mm. Yeah, so if, if it turns out, we, we I don't know when the center school people would be available either. So it might be that we do another meeting later in July. Um, but I think it might be that the community policing discussion is a two-parter. So that's, uh, that's one reason I bring that up. Well, I guess for the, the center school committee, I, I guess I'd like to discuss with the board first what we're doing with, with, with that before we have their presentation, I think. Uh, I, I don't have understand some... what we would discuss without, I would like to hear from them more directly about what they did before I can have a discussion about it. Well, not uh, not so much what they did. I, I guess I guess I have thoughts on how to best proceed from here to get uh, a final answer on what to dis what to do with it. Uh, mm -hmm. The committee is is part of it, and I guess I'm thinking of other things to do to uh, better promote it and get a better response. And I, I'd like to discuss it with the board before we hear their presentation. Okay. Because I think there's more than just their presentation that's going to needs to be done to, to oh. make a decision. Clearly. Yeah. And that doesn't have a July 30th deadline on it either. No. So if that spills into August, then then I think we're still okay with that. Right. Uh, the community policing one, though, then his contract, it says within 30 days from the start of the contract, which is July 1st, that's the time for uh, updating the community policing plan. So that one, I think we absolutely need to talk about. I think Brian can email us the current one and we can all bring ideas about how to update it to the meeting. And if John can't be there, John can email his ideas in if he can't possibly make it. Um, but that's, that's something that we really should have um, at a meeting in July, at least one meeting. And if we feel like we need a follow up, a short meeting later in the month is not out of the question either. Why don't Why don't you guys schedule the fifteenth? And if I if I'm there, I'm there. If I'm not, I'm not. Um, Fred, regarding the center school, the the recommendations of the committee are just one element of part of the decision making process. But in no way did we ever commit to doing whatever the committee suggested. We just are are going to value their input and take that input and, and other factors into consideration. But so this is a longer process than just hearing what the recommendations are and then giving those recommendations our blessing. Right, and, I, and I, I agree with what you're saying, Jonathan, and I guess I've got some thoughts on just how do we proceed from here? How do we proceed with this? And it's more than just 
the report from that committee. Right. And I just want to make sure that I'm part of that, those conversations. And I think we all should be, not just me, but that's a three person. Okay. Well, if, if you're available the 15th, fine. If not, we'll do it for the next meeting that you're available. Okay. But I would hold off on, on the, the presentation from that committee. Absolutely. Being. Okay. So let's schedule so the 15th for now and then figure out down the road later. Okay, the 15th at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. would be our next meeting. Okay. Grace. Okay. Jonathan. Fred, okay. Okay. A motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Jonathan. Yeah. Fred, yes. Okay.